All right, guys, one of the most difficult shots in golf, one of the most frustrating shots in golf, that's buried bunker shots. I'm gonna go over a ball that's just a little bit sitting down in the sand, a fried egg shot, and a completely buried shot. We're gonna talk about how to get out of the bunker, get on the green, and get, just get out of this trouble. So first, let's go over what is our normal bunker shot. If I was gonna set up this, let's say imagine I had just a perfectly clean lie. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the face quite a bit. So this, this is my 60 degree wedge. I have the face about 30 or 45 degrees open. I'm re-gripping the club. And then when I look down at it, it's almost you know, looking like it's pointing straight up toward the sky. I'm gonna put the ball a little bit up in my stance, favor my left side, and then make a big aggressive swing. I'm gonna go ahead and let the, the, my wrist release, so almost like a little bit of a flip at the bottom, and that's gonna get this flange kind of smacking the sand, and that's gonna allow my club to, this flange hits the sand, allows it to glide through the sand rather than to dig down into the sand. So depending on how buried the shot is, we're gonna to need to, to vary that a little bit. So that flange that helps the, the club glide through the sand is our best friend with a good lie. With a buried lie, we almost have to get away from this and just get the ball out and actually get rid of some of that, use a little bit more of the leading edge in extreme cases. So I'll get to that here in a second. If I'm just a little bit buried, I pretty much wanna go ahead and use my same technique that I would use uh, with a normal bunker shot. Now here's the only difference. If I put it up in my stance, that's usually what I want to do to hit behind the ball, get the ball coming in nice and shallow, or club coming in nice and shallow, get that ball to pop up, good clean shot. If it's a little bit worse of a lie, instead of having a little bit more up in my stance, let's say it's, let's say it's right here normally, I'm going to scoop my feet up about an inch or two and I'm going to put it more toward the middle of my stance. What that's going to do is that's going to help me to come more down into the ball. So if you imagine your club is swinging on an arc, the farther back I put that ball, the more descending it's gonna be hitting down into the ball as it comes through. So normal bunker shot, I'm gonna swing a little bit more aggressive and I'm gonna put the ball back a little bit in my stance. Now as I do that, I need to open my feet just a little bit more to counterbalance me hitting down. I don't want that ball to shoot out to the right. So open my feet, ball a little bit back, just a little bit more aggressive as I'm coming through the shot. So here if I was hitting a clean shot, even though this is about a, let's say 45 feet, 50 feet from the, from the flag, this is gonna be around the aggressiveness I would use to hit about a 50 or 60 yard, uh, 60 degree wedge normally. And I'm just gonna hit down behind that ball, let the sand do the work to pop it up out of there. There we go, so that came out nice and clean. I got about a six footer or so, just short left of the pin. So nice uphill putt, perfectly done there. Now the fried egg, that one gets a little bit tougher because now I don't really know if I can get down to the ball. If my club comes down and hits the sand first, and this flange catches the sand and lets it slide through the, the sand level with the ground, kind of imagine like this, well I might come down and my leading edge may hit right in the middle of the golf ball, and I could hit that ball and it'd shoot across the green. It may just smack right into this lip and pop up and stay in the bunker, that wouldn't be any good. Or if I get tentative and I, and I hit too far behind it and my club dies, then I'm just gonna leave the ball in the sand anyways. It's gonna go two or three feet. So here, instead of having the, the club quite as open, so this would be my normal amount, let's say 30 or 40 degrees open, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down to where it's just about 20 degrees open. Still pretty open, still using the loft of the club. And then here, I'm gonna get super aggressive. I wanna put this ball well back in my stance. I'm gonna really hit down in behind the sand. I want this club to hammer in down behind the sand and about one or two inches behind the ball. And then I wanna use a lot of force to make sure that this ball gets up and out. So my club is just a little bit less open, still pretty good and open compared to what most people do. Ball's more back in the stance, stance is open, and now I'm just gonna hit down and really, really hammer into this ball, make a nice aggressive swing. Let's see how this comes out. There we go, again, took a lot of sand behind it, a little bit better than the first one. I got about a four footer just up and to the left of the pin. So two good shots. You can see on this one also, notice on the first one I was nice and aggressive. This would be deeper than my normal shot. Let's go ahead and do a normal swing here. There's my normal depth on my bunker shot. So nice and shallow divot. This one, I took out a little bit more real estate and it went a little bit deeper. This one is super deep. You can see I got a lot of, I took a lot of sand out of there. There's sand, you know, 25 feet in front of me on the green. That's like a full lob wedge shot. If I'd hit this on a, on a fairway, that would have went 80, 85 yards. So I'm really making an aggressive swing when I'm doing that, even though that ball didn't go very far. The reason it didn't go very far is just because I took out a lot of sand with it and it slowed down my club. Here this ball is completely buried. So this is a tough one. 
no matter how good you get, these are never easy. There's no way, nobody gets good enough to say, I'm gonna accurately be able to do this. It's a bit of a guessing game here. So if I'm in really, really soft sand, I may still wanna play my club face open a little bit. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep the flange a little bit interacting with the turf to keep it gliding through there, or the sand to keep it gliding through. But I don't wanna open it so much that I can't get my, my club underneath this ball. So as your club starts to hit that sand, if the leading edge catches the sand, it's gonna dig down into the, into the sand. If the flange catches it, it's gonna come in through, through very nice and level. So with a normal shot, that's good, but if I open this club wide open, I'm gonna not be able to get underneath that ball. I need to go ahead and use basically what I would say is a square club face is what I would normally do. It's always gonna be a guessing game. There's no guarantees that I'm gonna be able to hit a great shot here, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a, basically a square club face, just a little bit open club face, so I've got about, let's say, 70 degrees aloft on this. I'm gonna, again, come down pretty steep into this ball and I'm just gonna try to explode it, um, you know, take out a ton of sand and get it up on the green. Now, the main difference here is, I wanna judge how soft this sand is. If it's nice, soft sand, I'm gonna hit a good two or three inches behind that golf ball and I'm just gonna take up a cubic yard of sand. I'm gonna try to take a bulldozer load of sand and throw it up there on the green just to make sure I get everything up there. If it's really tough, firmer sand, I'm gonna hit a little bit closer behind the ball and I may not be as aggressive. So this is pretty soft. I'm gonna have my face open maybe about 70 degrees or so, ball back in my stance again. So as the ball gets more and more buried, I have to not open the face quite as much. And then here, I'm gonna chop down straight on the, you know, two, three inches behind this ball and I'm gonna make a swing like I was gonna hit this lob wedge 120 yards is what I'm gonna feel like. The reason it's not gonna go too far is because I'm hitting behind the ball I'm letting the sand explode the ball up on the green rather than making direct contact with the club in the face or the ball in the face. Let's try it out. There we go, that one came out too. Oh, that one rolled up there pretty good. So that's all I could hope for there. You can see how deep that is. My entire club would be below the surface of the sand and I got about a six or seven footer up there. So try those out. As the ball gets more and more buried, we gotta get more aggressive. Ball goes farther back in our stance and the club face goes from really open to just a little bit open. Try those out, hit about 50 or 60 shots in the bunker. You guys are gonna be masters of those buried shots. All right, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. Now, one of the most important things we can do in golf, and let's face it, we all wanna crank the ball. We wanna hit it hard with a lot of power. That's probably the number one thing to improving your golf game that I found. And the best thing to do to improve your speed, your power, is to get a lot more lag in the downswing. So I got a great bonus for you one of the number one mistakes that I see people make that is really killing their lag. I'm gonna play a preview of that video. If you wanna watch the full thing, all you have to do, if you're on a desktop device, you're on a, on a computer, go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. That'll get you instant, instant access to that full video, plus five videos, five bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf system. It's gonna walk you through the entire system. And then if you're on a mobile device, a tablet, you're gonna go ahead and click on the iCard that's somewhere on the screen right now. Go ahead and click that iCard, click that link. It's gonna get you instant access, and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.